Hello and welcome. I'm Laura Leone, a consultant here at the National Council. And this session is about improving sleep. So whether you're having trouble falling asleep, staying asleep, or you're sleeping too much, that can happen for a whole host of reasons. Sometimes it's related to physical or mental wellness. Sometimes it's related to stress and racing thoughts or just uh, hyperactivity, and it can be also other things that we do, other behaviors that we do uh, leading up to and right before bedtime. And so when we think about the changes in behaviors and it's sort of improving our sleep process, we, when we refer to that, we call it sleep hygiene. So the things and the behaviors that we do uh, before bedtime, before sleeping, that allow us to sort of get the best and most optimal sleep. And so I wanted to just kind of go through uh, some, some different tips and tricks, things to know about sleep, um, just to kind of help you make some different decisions perhaps and help you to get a better night's rest. Um, for those individuals who are 18 and older, on average, we need about seven to nine hours of sleep. Again, that's on average. So some people need a little bit less, some people need a little bit more. Uh, we, you know, if we can try to go to sleep around the same time every day, that actually can really help us to build a routine around our sleep. It's sort of the psychological way to let your body know that it's ready to bed down for the night and to, to get ready to go to sleep. And if we do that and keep a regular schedule, our bodies get used to that routine. And interestingly enough, it takes about seven days to adjust to a new sleep pattern, but it actually only takes just one day to return to a typical sleeping pattern. So it really is important to keep at it, keep, at, keep doing it, and to do that consistently so that you build routine. When we have trouble sleeping, we know that this can really impact um, all sorts of different uh, things. So it can impact uh, our, in, in add to memory loss, uh, it can uh, cause weight fluctuation. It's been uh, connected to heart disease, to high blood pressure, and certainly to having a weak immune system. So again, all sorts of reasons of benefit that even if you don't have a ton of sleeping, sleeping trouble right now, it's always great to sort of reevaluate what you're doing at night as part of your sleep hygiene techniques. Something like reg uh, regularly exercising has been known to really help uh, help people fall asleep and stay asleep. People who exercise regularly are more likely to sleep better. They tend to get tired at an appropriate time. And even adding a 10 minute walk every day improves one's likelihood to get a good night's rest. Things like taking a hot shower um, or a warm bath before bed uh, relaxes the body. It makes it easier to fall asleep. Uh, and when your body temperature falls, your body actually feels more lethargic and, and due to that natural decrease in, in metabolic activity. And so that helps aid in falling asleep as well. Avoid eating before sleep. Um, although certainly you don't want to go to bed hungry because hunger can also wake the body up and cause us a restless night, um, you do want to think about eating with enough time so that you're satiated but not totally full right before bedtime. You know, because your body is digesting food, your heart rate increases from working uh, to metabolize that food. And it also increases the frequency of waking up in the middle of the night, again, if you go to bed on a full stomach. So make sure you've eaten and processed that food um, with an hour or even more um, time before bedtime. Try to avoid caffeine before sleep. So caffeine makes us feel more alert by blocking sleep-inducing chemicals in the brain, increasing adrenaline production, and consuming any before bed will leave you tossing and turning for hours. Also try to avoid alcohol before sleep. If you're planning on drinking, just try to end with enough time to be able to process that before you actually are going to bed. Um, because although alcohol sometimes can help you relax, it can diminish your quality of sleep by increasing that frequency of waking up during the night. And it, it's, it lessens the time spend, spent in, in REM sleep, um, which is your most restorative phase of sleep. Avoid very long daytime naps and taking a nap is okay, but no longer than 20 minutes. A 20 minute power nap will make it 
Um, anything more than that will make it hard to fall asleep at night. And if you were somebody who's been struggling with falling asleep at night, then you actually want to avoid napping altogether. Um, until your body is regulated and you're back on a regular sleep pattern, you're able to fall asleep. Um, you don't want to get used to taking naps because that will rem uh, enable you to remain inconsistent with your sleeping pattern. So you, as much as you might be exhausted and tired for the day, you want to try to not nap until you are back on a regular sleep pattern. When you're getting ready to fall asleep, definitely you want to think about avoiding uh, watching TV or looking at your phone, uh, you know, immediately right before bedtime. The blue light that comes from from your computers and your phones can impact um, your, your ability to sleep and sleep well. Uh, certainly it also stimulates the brain and the mind keeping you up. And um, for those of you who like to fall asleep with the TV on, and I certainly understand that there, that's something that you know, some people just feel like they have to do, then consider uh, setting your TV on a, t on a sleep timer, you know, something that allows for you to watch it fall asleep with enough time, but then it shuts off. Because why, while we're sleeping, even though we may not be consciously aware of it, our bodies are actually always taking in the sounds around us and then like all the noises around us and the changes in light. And as your TV is changing screens and shifting, that light change does actually uh, pay a toll on our ability to sleep soundly and kind of get the best night's sleep. So um, whether it's, you know, the radio is on or whether it's the TV, try to set a timer or something to shut off. Many people are learning to kind of fall asleep to relaxing sounds. You can uh, talk to your, uh, you know, Alexa or some other device to kind of play for you any sort of relaxing music or there's apps that exist like Calm. You know, all of those are great. Try to set a timer though so it shuts off or that it's not continuing throughout the entire length of the, of the time that you're sleeping. And even the temperature that you keep uh, your room at, if you can, you know, if you have control of that, you know, try to keep it just right. And what just right is, so it, research shows that the ideal bedroom temperature for sleeping is anywhere between 65 and 72 degrees. So too hot or too cold will make it harder to sleep well. Um, you know, so we, we really try to think about the things that we do before bedtime. Creating a routine and a ritual to kind of bed down for the night, is, it can be really helpful and useful as a way to tell your body, okay, now it's ready. So really think about, is there a certain time that you can transition to putting on pajamas or shutting off the lights or dimming the lights, um, being able to brush your teeth, doing all those things that you would do. And it kind of tells our body, okay, it's ready. It's time. Let's, let's wind down. If you're somebody who's tr having trouble uh, falling asleep and you're tossing and turning throughout the night, do avoid staring at the clock. That does not help whatsoever, other than just make it feel like a forever time. And actually, it's, in it's recommended and encouraged to get up and out of bed and move to another location if you're having trouble. So don't stay in bed tossing and turning for too long. After a certain amount of time, get up, remove yourself, and go sit quietly somewhere else. Don't turn on a bun bunch of lights. Don't do things that are going to stimulate or wake you up further. So like don't turn on the TV or looking at your phone again. Try to avoid that. Um, you know, something quiet, maybe reading at most um, and otherwise sitting. And then once you start to feel tired again or just allowing some time to pass, get up and then move back to bed and try to go, go to bed again. Um, that can be pretty useful. The other thing, you know, a lot of, a lot of people will talk about just not having a quiet mind when they're trying to fall asleep and really struggling with like racing thoughts or just thinking about the day's events or the next day's plans. Um, and when, you know, when that happens, certainly, you know, if you can try to relax and engage your mind in um, one of the other relaxation techniques that we're sharing through the conference, um, we encourage you to do that. Um, things like deep breathing, progressive muscle relaxation, guided imagery, visualization. Those are some other techniques that you can pair with good sleep hygiene in order to calm yourself down at night. So I do encourage you to try one of those as well.
hopefully at least something, if not multiple um, things that we've, you know, I've covered today can, can help you to find some good rhythm and good uh, new behaviors for your sleeping. And hopefully it's some improved sleep. Thank you so much for joining. Take care.